Now, unfortunately, the polo is no longer with us, but we're always up for the next big thing in the tuning scene. And apparently, Hyundai has the answer to it. This is the i20 N line. Now, we've done a video on the N line before, but in that, we found it to be a little bit lethargic and not really enthusiastic. But this is a stage two example. So, hopefully, all of those problems will be solved with this. Now, let's jump straight into the engine. So, this is a 1 liter TGDI engine and it's a direct competitor to the Polo and its 1 liter TSI. And in stock form, it actually makes more power than the Polo 1 liter TSI. 120 horsepower and 172 Newton meters of torque compared to 110 horsepower and 175 Newton meters of torque. And when you boost both of the cars up to stage two, this and the Polo roughly make the same amount of power and the same amount of torque. Probably a 1 litre TSI in stage 2 guys makes around 150 horsepower. This makes anywhere between 140 to 145. Torque is basically identical, 250 Nm for both. And the N line comes with two uh, gearbox options, either a 6 speed IMT gearbox which is their semi-automatic kind of thing or a 7 speed dual clutch transmission. Let's quickly run over the looks as well. So, up front, the bumper and the grille has changed by a little bit. You get this checkered flag kind of design. Move over to the side, you'll see the N-line specific wheels which are 16 inches. Uh, you also get some side skirts with red accents. Move over to the back, as you can see the blackout treatment is all over the roof. You have a very aggressive diffuser, of course it's not really that functional. And you get this twin tip exhaust system. It comes stock as well like this, but this is a Remus exhaust system. The downpipe has been made by the boys over here at Check Engines. Shout out to them. And the tips and everything apart from that is made by Remus. And it sounds absolutely wild. And the best part is it's Valvetronic. Hold up, have you checked out our website? TheDriversUp.com is live now with a new segment called TDH Classifieds where you can list your exotic, performance or even project car and target the right audience. Even if you are in the market to buy yourself a nice car of your dreams, something like this, a first of its kind Skoda VRS 245 with an all-wheel drive system or maybe something more subtle like this Punto Abarth with a Stage 1 Plus and a lot of goodies. So head on forward to TDH Classifieds and get the car of your dreams. Coming to the interior, the N-Line specific interior is a very nice place to be in. First of all, I absolutely adore the steering wheel, perforated leather in the middle and a really nice looking design. Since this is the IMT variant, you get a gear shift knob in the middle which has the N-Line logo and some nice stitching and everything around it. The N-Line specific seats with the checkered flag design and the instrument cluster is digital and the infotainment system is very intuitive. But this isn't what you're here for. What you're here for is how it drives and I really want to find out how this IMT transmission works with all of the mods around it. Using the IMT is a little bit unnerving at the start. First of all, since I'm used to driving manual cars, I'm always moving my left leg when I'm trying to change gear but the thing is with the combination of sensors and uh, throttle pedal uh, sensors and everything the car actually understands when you're trying to shift gear and that's very unnerving because you're moving your left hand but not your left leg so that is the weirdest part of this driving experience so when you start driving the car properly and once you're over this whole IMT situation you'll find that the car feels a little bit lethargic and it's not finding that stage 2 punch that most cars get after they're modded. But that's because the valves are closed and this button over here is the magic trick. Press off or on. on. Press on and the valves open. Downshift, downshift. It auto blips for you. Is 
it sounds sounds hilarious it sounds absolutely hilarious the pops and bangs and everything is absolutely nuts it has a remus exhaust system and it's a valtronic one like i just said so the money is well spent because you don't want to be creating a ruckus all the time and once those valves are open and the airflow is not restricted at all this thing is a little pocket rocket and the main thing is that in its stock form the n line feels very lethargic it feels lazy the engine doesn't have that character of what we expect from a hot hatch that is at least for india and well do some mods like this increase the airflow of the engine this thing is an absolute riot to drive but the best part of the n line has to be in the bends because this thing like almost all journalists who have gotten their hands on it is one of the best handling hot hatches that you can buy in india ever i mean it's as good as probably a punto apart i would say and once this thing starts pops and banging it just doesn't stop it it's just wild this is the Now I am going to be brutally honest. This IMT transmission doesn't suit the car at all. It was fine for Hyundai to put it into the Venue or the i10 Neos, cars that serve a completely different purpose. But with the N line, Hyundai should have given it a proper manual transmission, or should have just stuck with the DCT option. The IMT is fine if you're just cruising around town at low speeds, but once you demand the performance, the gearbox gets super confused as to what's going on. Shifting speeds, I would say, are slower than a normal manual transmission. But let's take a look at the bright side. The i20 N line is the best handling hatch to probably ever grace India, which is sub 20 lakhs from the showroom. It is definitely more communicative and capable than a stock Polo TSI. The brakes felt more progressive, and more importantly, the drama of the one-liter TGDI is really fun. Compared to a 1 liter TSI, the 1 liter TGDI definitely doesn't feel as fast or as potent. Would I personally choose a i20 N line over the Polo 1 liter TSI as a tuner car? Probably not. The Polo is just superior in each and every way as a project car. The aftermarket support is endless, the engine is better, the tuners are more familiar with it too. But that's not the point. You anyways cannot buy a Polo anymore, and the i20 N line as a car is better than the Polo in each and every measurable way. More tech, more space, and technically cheaper to run too. Don't take these comments in a negative way at all, because the i20 is a great car. But it's maybe just that the Polo was just too good for an Indian enthusiast, or I am just being a wuss and missing my own Polo GT TSI. So what are my final thoughts after spending a good amount of time with the N line? Well first of all I absolutely love the handling, I love the interior and I love the way it looks. It's a proper boy racer car. But there are is some stuff that I don't really like about it. Well first of all is that the engine still doesn't feel as good as a TSI. But the thing is it sounds better than a TSI most definitely. Uh, the other thing is that the IMT might not be the best option when you're buying a car especially if you're going to try and do it in an enthusiastic manner. Well, IMT is a little bit lethargic in gear shifts. It doesn't really understand what you're trying to do and a proper manual would have been an absolute treat in this car. I don't know why Hyundai couldn't just take the gearbox which was in the i20 Turbo and just put it into this because that was a very simple job. But unfortunately only an IMT and a DCT is available. Coming to the DCT, the DCT is great, pretty snappy, little lethargic on downshifts, but for me I would go for the DCT if I'm actually looking to buy this car. And coming on to what this thing represents, it represents something that Hyundai is trying to catch on to which is selling to the enthusiast and that excites me a lot because I hope in the near future Hyundai actually gets the i20n. Please